Morning, this is our third and final class 08 shunter called John 08822 Hornby model analog as so I hope you can see the detail is superb as standard it comes without a driver and it comes without lights I haven't added any in real life they made 996 class 8 between 1952 and 62 there are 82 preserved 100 still in service Hornby model for this is R3343 and I believe this is st it still survives and I cannot find it listed on any heritage railway so I can only assume that it still belongs to an, the national network however just because I can't find it listed does not mean it does not belong to a heritage railway thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video thank you okay here we are with the radius 2 curve points test which you've all seen before this was programmed on computer software when I first built this part of the layout. Basically the computer tells you what fits into a space, not what will run on it. However, this being short chassis 060 will pretty much go around anything. And here we are, all in some frog points. And slow it down a bit more please. And we're slowing this right, right down. And you can see we're going over the insel frog now. And you can see it's coming to another curve point. It's radius 2 on the inner part of the point. It's just about to go over the insel frog now. And as I say to people, as long as your track is level on the horizontal and the perpendicular, you can run these locos fine. And this is the third class 8 review that I've done within the last two weeks. The only thing with this one is, as I say, it does make a strange noisy engine. Now normally I would I'd take it apart and maybe oil it and have a look at it. But it sounds to me like TTS sound. It just makes a slight growling sound, you can hear, but it runs, as you can see, if the slow speed running was a problem, I'd have it apart or send it back to Hornby. But it runs so, so nicely here. And I'm doing this slowly, not to send you to sleep or bore you to tears, which it may well do, but just to show you that these will run fine over insole frog points. Also it shows that these will run perfectly well over really really tight bends. I might be wrong but I think these 060s can do radius 1 which is tighter. But don't judge my world as being gospel on this. Thank you for watching. Okay what we're going to demonstrate now is the loco going over three insole frogs. So this is a Pico three-way insole frog point and we're going to show you that A, there's no problem with this point, with two insole frogs. And B, we're showing what the loco can do. So if we can fire away, please. We do have two locos in the siding. But being digital, they won't move. And you can see here, it's going over the two insole frogs at once, not, not one, but two. And here we are, there's one, there's another, and we're going to bring it back and out. So if anybody tells you that A06Os don't run over insole frog points, you've seen for yourself, and it's running over two. Thank you. And as I've said, this one is a little bit noisy compared to my others. Now you can see them in the siding. Here we are going through one, two, three, four insole frog points with no brake whatsoever
it just demonstrates how well these locos function in sidings and also the fact that they will go over into frog points without any issues at all. And then we're just going to run it round. And you can see that. We are we're going to go over the tightest part of the track, a radius two curve point, and it comes in on a radius two. And you can see, being short chassis. Easy peasy. And here's another shot of the tightest part of my track. Radius 2 onto a radius 2 curve. Computer program fits into space. Some locos will not do this, however, this being short chassis. It's very, very good. Go around anything almost. I do like this blue colour on John and you all know by now I do like these back and cranes, they are very very good. I'm running a little bit faster than I did on the others because it just watching one of these go round at no speed through a long video. I'm tired of it and I made it, so other my own baby, so others must get more tired of it. I always do these shots so you can see the effect of the low car going through scenery really. Gives you ideas, doesn't it? And the important thing is you can see what you don't like as well, which is also just as important. Here's a nice panorama for you. If you're watching this on a on the YouTube app on a large computer screen or TV, you will see the loco going around in the background. I just got a wad we all we all the uh, push rod bar on the wheels and I put some oil between the axles and the growling sound seems to have gone. I thought it was the engine, so sometimes it's nice to be wrong. And this is one of those occasions. It does, it runs like a diamond. Now if you look again with this shot you will see the loco in the background. And we're going to run it up our own version of the Licky Incline. Done accidentally because I'd never heard of the Licky Incline until a few weeks ago. And you can actually see it slowing down only slightly. as it reaches the peak of the incline. Now here we're going to show the loco pushing the crane. 
because in real life being a shunter we're going both directions and if you just catch it going behind the buildings and here we are shunting the crane on the inside of the track Okay, here we are. We're going to put the crane away now. It's going through a streamline points crossover and it's going up a hill. We're going to have to give it a bit more power on the hill because it's pushing rather than pulling. And then we're going to put the crane away in its siding. And here we go. Thank you. Here we are, we've got it pulling some clay wagons, they're Batman wagons, we weathered them ourselves. And here we are going through the streamline points crossover. Now they've got to be dead level, not just for the wheels, but if you have the loco tilt, it will jolt on a points crossover. Here's a nice little shot. You'll see this class 8 now going past the other two class 8s. Here we go. Coming down the long straight. And here we are, finish off by going around the wall loop with this little loco and the china clay wagons. And it really is, it's a fantastic little locomotive. As I said, by oiling the uh, pushrod arms and just putting a little bit of oil on the axles close to the chassis where they're going to the chassis, we've eliminated a lot of the noise that we had but a lot of that could be because we haven't run it for ages and oil dries, everything dries. People make the mistake, they do not run a loco, they leave it out somewhere in a box and everything dries, everything dries. 
and it's the worst thing for anything mechanical for it not to be run and that's why we cycle around our locos fairly regularly and you're going to see the loco now it's going to disappear off into the sunset thank you very much for watching and I hope you've enjoyed seeing this locomotive class 08 John a Hornby model running on our model railway thank you